Right. Thank you for showing up on this beautiful evening. Um, let's get to it. Any comments by visitors this evening? I'm looking at an empty, mostly empty room, but any comments by visitors? All right. Seeing none. I'm going to move to comments by board members, and I'm going to kick it off, if you don't mind, with um, just what I wrote for appreciation. We're coming off of uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, however, I don't think I don't think that a week will suffice. So um, I'd just like to say, in a world where recognition of those who really deserve it, um, I would like to take this time to uh, express my, our deepest gratitude to our teachers and school staff. They consistently go above and beyond, working long hours and sacrificing personal time to ensure that each child receives the best, best possible education and care. Today, as we express our appreciation, let us also reflect on the profound impact that these dedicated individuals have on the lives of our students. They are not just educators, they are mentors, role models, and caring, respectful adults. They instill in our children the values of hard work, perseverance, a growth mindset, and kindness, shaping them into responsible and compassionate individuals. As the school board chair, I want to publicly say that your work is noticed and appreciated. Your dedication inspires us all to strive for excellence and civility in our respective roles. Looking ahead, let us reaffirm our commitment to supporting and uplifting our teachers and school staff in every way possible throughout the year. Thank you. Anyone else would like to say any words? It's time to do it. Just go ahead. All right, I'll go next. Um, ditto, it's what Maggie said. But I just wanted to say, like, our teachers and our administrators are amazing, and they hold up our community and our um, our precious children, you know, and make sure everything runs smoothly. I, I don't think that anything can ever say enough thank you to what they do, but I appreciate everyone and all their time and effort in what to this amazing city that we have. That's it. Thanks. All right. I'd like to recognize everyone in the SAU 56 school community. Thank you for all that you do today and every day to shape the future of our students in our community. Please know that your efforts to adapt and, to, and innovate do not go unnoticed and your impact reaches far beyond the schools. Each of you do an amazing job and that continues to make Summersworth the best. Thanks. Um. It's an interesting thing for me. It's kind of meta because I'm also a teacher and I've been doing teaching for 20 years, uh, just in a different place. My wife asked me tonight, well, what would you want someone to say to you? And I think I just recognize the unique position school board is in to, to connect families and children and staff and, and make the school district actually just facilitate. We're just here to facilitate what the school needs. And so I... Um, you know, there's just so many things about Teacher Appreciation Week, and hopefully, I hope everybody feels appreciated, teachers, staff. Like, I hope, I hope people have done a good job appreciating you. Like, <laughs> um, I appreciate you as my colleagues. Like, I know what it's like to have a teacher bestie, and what it's like to be able to have that look in the hallway and not even uh, have to say anything about it, or to have um, the amazing paras and staff, or, or, you know, support staff take kids under their wing, and it's just. It's the heart and soul of a school. So I just, I guess, want to say I'm here for you. Um, we're here for you. We're here for the kids and the parents, too. But, like, you're the third part of this triangle, the staff. The staff, it's the staff, the, the kids and the parents, and, and we're just here for you. And, and I hope if you don't feel appreciated, you let us know and that we can do better. And if you do feel appreciated, which I hope so, um, just I want to keep appreciating you. So that's where I'm at. I was going to wait until the end, but everyone's do, doing their congratulations and thanks and uh, to the uh, uh, the teachers now. So I will I will also chime in. I am reminded of a quote that many of you may may know: "When a child speaks, the parent has already spoken," and that is intended to show when you have a child that is poised like ours, who is curious like ours, 
good-spirited, supportive of everyone else like what we have in our school system. The parent, our teachers, has already spoken. So I look at the product in our, in our students, and we know that it's, it is all because of our good teachers. And so thank you, thank you very much. Wow, there's not really words. Um, it happens to be a week on the calendar, so I guess we're all taking this time to speak right now, but I think we hopefully can speak throughout the year um, every day about how much we appreciate the staff, and honestly, that's why well, I can't speak for everyone else, but that's the only reason why I'm here um, is for the staff and students and families um, in this area. And, you know, teachers for sure have shaped not only my life, but um, the best thing in my life, my daughter. Um, and so I am forever grateful. Thanks. So I feel like teaching, it's sort of like, parenting that you know what do they say it's like thankless like you just you don't get that you don't get you don't hear thank you right a lot so you do a good job because you know that's the right thing to do but you don't always hear thank you I appreciate that um, in fact you know you maybe hear grumbling complaining whatever um, but I, I feel like teaching like parenting for many people is also a calling and you know, I just want the teachers out there and the, you know, the staff, edu educators to know that we know that you work, you know, once that last bell rings, your day isn't done, um, that you take work home with you, that you work on the weekends, um, that the summer isn't just sitting on the beach for three months, um, and that you don't go into it for the money. Um, and so I think that's, you know, that's one of those things, right? You, you, it, with all the challenges that we know are inherent to the profession and you still choose to go into it says a lot about um, just what you know what you value so uh, thank you um, you know yeah beyond just the week thank you thank you I appreciate that word calling because it is a calling it's a calling it's a passion and it's a skill it's a skill that not everyone has and that's something that I recognize and appreciate. And I can't think of any other profession that has the same type of uh, life-lasting influence than teachers. I, I, I can barely remember you know, many of the names that I've met in the last week, but I can, I can recite, and I won't, by the way. <laughs> Um, although I have done it, I think, throughout the years here. Um, I can recite the names of every one of my teachers that I've had from first, first again, <laughs> and, and, through, uh, and through high school. Um, and again, I can't do that with many of the people that I meet <laughs> throughout the day. Um, and, uh, and I think that says a lot. And uh, uh, there isn't much time that goes by that I don't think of some of the words that were um, said to me by some um, very good, very passionate, motivated teachers, uh, and including, uh, you know, some of the teachers that stopped by my locker on the, you know, in between class and had said to me, um, hey, I really like what you said last week. You know, and I think that kind of, those words are powerful and remembered, even if it might seem like a passing moment. Um, but that's the type of influence that teachers have, the type of life-lasting influence that teachers have on children um, and in the children's children. Um, so thank you. Um, when I think about teachers, I also am brought um, to consider teachers that I had and had a lasting impact on me. And as I also went through the school district at Hilltop and the middle school, um, I think about a lot of teachers in particular, and it isn't always the forms of education that I received from these teachers, but rather the relationship that was built with those teachers where I felt seen, I felt understood, I felt accepted, I felt safe in their classroom. And so I think I want to say thank you to all the teachers specifically, not for what they're doing in terms of educating, but all the work they do 
to see these young people, validate them. You know, I think about my Tess Hall third grade teacher at Hilltop, and I have a photo of me with a book that says, I want to be an artist. And I am currently still uh, pr working as a professional artist today. And so much of that is because she expressed that being a valid way of being in the world. Um, and I also think that, you know, people talk about how for children, wh what they need most for success is to have a single adult individual see them and witness their experience, validate their experience. And we often hope that's apparent, um, but oftentimes that doesn't happen. And it is left to a teacher to really see what a student needs in their life and validate their experience. So again, I just think that all the sort of emotional work that teachers do to support these families, um, it's sort of upholding our whole community. So thank you. Wow, all right. Thank you to this board for those words. I really appreciate that. Really, thank you for all for saying something. Um, no requirement to do so, but it's really meaningful and important. Okay, we'll move along to our consent calendar. Uh, what is the wish of the board to adopt the consent calendar? Make a motion to adopt the consent calendar. Second. second. Any discussion about any items on the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, all in favor of adopting the consent calendar, say aye. 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 All right, it's adopted. All right, we'll go to our in reports this evening. We'll start with our superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have one thing uh, to ask of you tonight. Um, we're in the midst of hiring people and uh, we're competing with other schools and um, we're, the principals and other administrators asked me if I could seek your approval to hire between now and the board meeting rather than waiting because we're afraid we might lose some folks. So if you could just suspend your rules and allow me to hire for the next two weeks, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay. All right, looking for a motion to suspend rules. I make a motion to suspend rules. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Yes. What rule? Uh, to sus it's Sorry. not an action item, <laughs> it's a report item. So we're suspending the rules under reports to make this an, you know, like not going through new bit, a first read and a second read. Fine. Since th the immediacy of it. I was thinking that there was some kind of rule prohibiting you from. No, <laughs> no, typically it comes to us as, you know, it, in, at our board meetings, but at this time it makes so much sense to be able to act on it through the administration to hire. And we're and really getting some great candidates. Uh, what's fascinating to me is we've had uh, three st students from UNH who have interned here that have been recently hired. They liked it so much as interns that they applied and, and we, we know them, so that's been great. So, yeah. Great. All right. Um, all in favor of suspension of the minutes, say aye. 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 All right, now we're looking for a motion to uh, grant this the um, superintendent uh, hiring for uh, May 14th to May 28th. I make a motion to allow the superintendent to make the requisite hires he's recommending um, in the next two weeks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Travis. Wonderful. Any discussion about that? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. That's wonderful. Good luck. And Thank you. Um, Appreciate that. Show them, show them the beginning of this meeting or the <laughs> minutes. <laughs> they just say, come aboard. Yeah. Come to Summersworth. Okay. Anything else on your end? No, that's no? it. I'm All right. A couple things down below. Okay. Perfect. All right. No um, other reports this evening. Uh, committee reports or standing committee uh, budget and revenue. Um, Chair Marsh. Thank you, Chair Larson. Uh, the budget and revenue committee has not met since our last meeting. Okay. Uh, building grounds and transport and transportation committee. Uh, Chair Clark. So building and grounds has not met since our last meeting. We're trying to finalize. Um, I'm meeting to get together to view the fields because we have not seen those since snow and it's clearly there's no snow on the ground so we want to make sure we can get out there but we'll post that soon. Great. The grounds do look beautiful this time of year. We just looked saw today. They look wonderful. Um, educational programs and community outreach I don't believe there has been a meeting. Or there has update? not been a meeting and will not be a meeting until August. Okay. All right and policy. Ditto. All right. I know we haven't had, we have not met no meeting probably until August. Okay, perfect. All right, moving down. Uh, there's no presentation this evening. Uh, agenda item number seven, our policy adoption. We have one um, policy for first reading GBCD background investigation and criminal history records check to replace existing policy. Um, I just read I make it a on. motion to read this policy by title only. Do I have a second on that? 
please. Okay. Any discussion about the title? No. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. All right. This is, you know, for first reading. It'll be at the second reading um, at the May uh, 28th meeting and look it over if there's any real nitty-gritty please reach out about questions in the meantime new business oh oh do oh. i need to read it oh yeah oh i yeah well you can I'm read sorry. it i mean <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay i read it out loud but you read you oh read. did you i'm sure sorry. that's okay yeah. i well, no i did that cover i'm sorry i just shoosh, went Thank right over did. my head go ahead go ahead all right yeah policy gbcd background investigation and criminal history records check to replace oh sorry the policy's title is Background Investigation and Criminal History Records Check. Dash to replace. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That's not the title. Perfect. All right. All right. Moving on to to new business. Um, is that under old business? I'll do that under old. Yep. Okay. Yep. New business. Um, oh, yeah, agenda 8.1, approval of district-wide safety plan as required by the New Hampshire Department of Labor. So I'm going to have Katie speak to this. She's been leading uh, a group of folks within the district. Uh, the Department of Labor requires us to have on a, um, a, a safety plan composed of 50 percent union members, 50 percent um, non-union members or administrators, I should say. And uh, we, we don't need to approve it tonight. Um, that's a mistake on the agenda. I'll, I'll take the, the heat for that. It's more uh, for a first read for you folks. Uh, so that you can absorb it and then uh, give us some feedback. But I'll turn the floor over to Katie, and uh, Katie will let you speak. And could you talk about who's on the committee yep, as well? Yep, that's what I have, yep. Yeah, so as Lou mentioned, um, this is driven by an RSA, uh, Department of Labor, Labor Requirement. We had an existing plan, but it hasn't been updated a number of years. Um, we had committee prior to COVID. COVID hit, then each building did their own safety stuff and did it building by building, but that's not what we're supposed to do. We're have to, supposed to have the district-wide committee made up of both employer and employee reps, and it has to be equal membership, so that way it's not you know just all management. And so each meeting, if it's uneven, then we have to make people leave and you can only have you know if there's four man uh, employers then there has to be four, four employees there or it doesn't constitute a meeting so um, we formed the committee this year um, I want to give a shout out to all of them because they worked really hard um, getting this prepared so the employer representatives is myself um, Nicole Garrett our HR coordinator and also, it was Sharon Faria when she was here. Um, Jay Lilly, our facilities director. Um, Michael Bluen, the assistant principal at the high school. He's actually the chair of the committee and has done a lot of work um, this year. And Kate Gove. And then the employee representatives is Angela Fico, uh, Leah Lanez, uh, Nan Soul, Doug Bono, and Amanda Walsh. So um, the committee's met five times throughout the school year. Our focus, again, has been updating this plan because we had to have one in place. Um, we used other district plans as examples that had already been through the process, had it vetted through their attorneys. You know, we, we wanted to start somewhere, so we figured we would do that. Um, and another business administrator in the state sent me their plan and a couple others, so um, we used that as like a starting point. We also had Primex come in and give us feedback because um, they made sure that we had all the requirements that were due to be in there. Um, so that way we met all those requirements. Um, the, the law also changed that required us to have a student violence plan along with our safety plan. We decided to have them as two separate documents um, so that way we didn't have to revise the safety plan just because we want, you know, if we wanted to revise one and not the other, we didn't want to have to redo the whole thing. So we have them as two separate documents and to me they're two separate things. Um, so the plan going forward is once the board takes a look at it, um, the Buildings and Grounds Committee also took a look at it um, at their last meeting, so they've already looked at it. Um, once the board approves it, the committee's plan is to roll this out district-wide to staff in August. Um, there's a pledge sheet in here for people to, you know, d document that they've read it and they're required to follow all of these policies in, in regards to safety. Um, there's forms in here that they have to fill out if there's an accident or different things like that. Um, the committee will be ongoing each year. Our focus next year will be to tour all the buildings and do inspections of the different classrooms in each of the buildings, make sure that they're following all the safety protocols, do training if we need to, if they're not. Um, we'll also be working on reviewing our workers' comp claims, uh, looking at trends, um, looking at the student-related ones to see if we need to provide more training to our staff, um, if it's, you know, 
repetitive things that are happening with one particular student, we would review that with our special ed administrators to see if we need to do something there. Um, so that's kind of the work that we'll be doing as a committee. So this is your plan here for review. Again, a lot of the safety plan is dictated by state law. There's not much, you know, it's about making sure you're using the, you know, different things. It's more related to custodial, I think, mostly, but also, you know, teachers in their classrooms making sure that if they're hanging things up that they're using the proper safety, you know, procedures and things like that. And then as I mentioned, the um, student violence plan is in here. It's not very long. Um, we tried to keep it pretty simple. Um, there's forms here if something were to happen um, for the people to fill out so that it can be investigated. There's a fl nice flow chart in the back that describes what happens if you are injured and what steps you need to take and if you're not, these steps you need to take. So um, it's there for your review. Again, as Lou mentioned, we don't have to vote on it tonight. My thought was get you, you know, it's a lot of information. You can digest it, read it. We'll bring it back at the next meeting to approve as long as we have it approved before the end of the year so we can roll it out uh, in the fall. Great. Thank you and to the committee for all your work on this. Yes, Board Member Brown. Just a question. You mentioned um, Primex. So mm -hmm. has Primex given blessed this document? Yes, they attended our meeting and walked through every section with us as we did, uh, as we created it. Okay, I just want to make sure our insurance company yep. <laughs> yep. is okay mm -hmm. with this document. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Glad they were involved. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Any other questions at this point? No, thanks again for the, all the help. It's, 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 it's comprehensive and really um, important document and I'm sure a lot of hours went into it. So we, we, we all appreciate that. Thank you. Um, anything else? Nope. All right, that's it for new business. Uh, old unfinished business this evening. Uh, agenda item 9.1 is an update on before and after school program. And I'd like to enter in uh, agenda item 9.2, our calendar, uh, Summers for School Board schedule for school year 24 25 draft. We've already seen this, we just need to vote on that. So I'm going to enter that in as 9.2 um, for a vote tonight. Um, things can change, but this is we want to be able to have the 24-25 um, uh, schedule for our board meetings if there's no objection to that question. Okay. All right, agenda item. Um, yep. I have a quick question. Looking over this draft, we're we talking about this tonight? This is open for discussion? Oh, yeah. Okay. When are, when are we talking about it? A 9.2, so it's, we have a 9.1 update, and then this will be agenda item 9.2 right after. Okay. So not right now, but after. Thank you. Yep. 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 All right, so 9.1, our update on before after school program. Um, I brought together a, an ad hoc, which we voted at the last meeting for an exploratory um, uh, group um, t of, of, um, of people to talk about after school. Thank you to board member Marsh. Thank you to counselor Cameron and um, the families that came, the families that reached out to me personally about their concern about um, SYC going away. It was a wonderful discussion. I think that um, I really see as part of our role as school board members is to kind of uh, curate and procure uh, opinions and l actively listen in order to uh, make decisions better. <laughs> and um, overall, I want to thank everyone that showed up because it gave uh, clarity and it gave insight to what's happening. And I think that um, it was needed for a degree of, and kind of wonderful to a degree. The positives is that what we heard from our families is that they love the SYC program, they love the staff, they want to make sure the values are aligned between our school day and our after school program. And that was wonderful to hear. They've had positive experiences, um, difficult to do, um, you know, to be able to be employed, work, many situations that require an after a 2.30, 3 o'clock end of school end of school day, right? Doesn't always fit in. Um, although it's not our legal requirement, I think as a cultural, it's our community commitment to after school programming. And that's what we're kind of voting on today. Um, due to budget constraints, as we all know, um, we had to, uh, we, we had to reduce the um, subsidizing of our af after school program. However, um, grateful for the opportunity for the YMCA being the, you know, the, the organization that's coming aboard, um, you know, 
to be able to help us out this. So we have something to be in place for next um, school year. Uh, Remember, Marsha, when am I forgetting anything else? I mean, I wanted to kind of give an overview. We will be voting on this today. Um, there is one organization to be able to vote on. Communication is will be in the superintendent and other stakeholders in our in our um, district to be able to communicate out to families and kind of um, get that information out there, what's going on sooner than later. I think that's important to be able to communicate and uh, be clear about what we're doing, clear to staff, clear clear to, you know, new families coming in and everyone kind of in our group, but yeah. Certainly, thank you, Chair Larson. And I think that was really a, a very good summary of the meeting. And I wanna thank Chair Larson for creating the ad hoc. Um, I think it was wise to have members of the, both the um, school board and the member of the city council and have um, additional Residents, I say additional because as we are too, <laughs> um, but additional residents as well. Um, and you know, the ad hoc, it was one meeting. Um, and you know, I just want to share some of my thoughts for discussion um, here as an individual board member. Um, that, and part of this is um, also um, for folks who are. Um, the whole dozen who are watching. <laughs> um, but um, as we know, SYC um, uh, was created a number of years ago, and, and for the vast majority of the time, it was grant funded um, and um, really good programming. Um, because of the grants, there were strings attached, like there are with many programs with grants. Um, and it, as Chair Larson stated, it was also partially subsidized in order to keep the rates low for families. Uh, and from my uh, knowledge, um, the, there was a decision that was made in part because of the, um, those strings uh, and the thought that, um, that the grants, the, there was, there, there really was an expectation of at some point moving away from the grants. Um, and so there was a committee form between school board, city council and others, and they recommended um, to have a collaborative effort of funding between the school board and the city, uh, excuse me, the school district and the city. It, with the school board, school district, excuse me, um, um, funding um, the majority of it. Um, and I did, uh, as a member supported at the time, uh, I did publicly uh, express some concern that um, it would become a sort of low-hanging fruit during budget season um, because as uh, Chair Larson indicated, it is not a legal obligation, All right? Um, so I did have concerns about that um, and it did get, so it did make it past the first year uh, there were some questions, and I thought, uh-oh, here we go, first year, um, and didn't make it past the second. Um, so I did jot down some notes from me, mostly for your sake, <laughs> um, that it is true that it is not our legal obligation to provide programming or after-school care um, to our children. It is true that we need to prioritize um, funding for, pro for programming and uh, academics. Uh, it is true that we're not childcare providers. Uh, the school district, the city of Summersworth, and government in general cannot be the everything to all. However, I believe we can do more, that we can think differently. We can acknowledge the skyrocketing living costs, including housing, which um, Chair Larson referenced, generally. We can acknowledge many of our residents are working multiple jobs to make their ends meet. I asked the residents who were 
in attendance, I asked them point blank. I gave them an out. They didn't need to answer. <laughs> um, but I asked them point blank, um, could you afford your housing without working? No, they could not. Um, we can acknowledge the cost it has on our children, uh, including student performance. Let us acknowledge we need to continue thinking differently, holistically, and smarter. What I'd like to do, and maybe not necessarily tonight, right, but explore ways to lessen the increase on our residents for after school programming, despite it not being our legal obligation, despite having other priorities. And I'd like to explore ways to do this collaboratively, school district, city. Anyone else? Partner, private partnerships, grants? Uh, I think we can do that. We're talking lessening the impact. We're not talking free after school programming necessarily. We're not. Um, the way the numbers work out, based on what I was seeing, okay, so this is from memory. Um, from if you add up the um, the before care and after care, it adds up to be about six hundred and forty some odd dollars a a month, right? And by the way, I'm not suggesting that it's a high cost for for the Y, because people deserve to be paid. <laughs> people des and this is that's full time, by the way. It's five days a week. People deserve to be paid. People who, who do these jobs deserve to be paid. But it's certainly more than what the cost for the SYC program was. Um, so as a member, you know, I, would, I would like to be able to explore some options to try to keep the cost low, lower for our residents. Um, thank you. Yes, Board Member Wentworth. Um, I absolutely support Todd and uh, or, I'm sorry. Yep, that's okay. Chairperson Marsh, um, and um, of budget. Yeah. Uh, of budget. <laughs> um, find a way in budget to be able to figure it all out later. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I and I think I think no. it would be well. I think it would be um, it might behoove um, some. Clearly, it's something you're passionate about, um, and I support a committee or someone really investigating different grants that we could do, different ways that we could allevi alleviate some of the strain on our families um, by possible grants or other avenues um, so that we can offer the, um, the why. And I think it's awesome that this is even on our, that we all are having this discussion, right? Um, and we have changed from SYC to now offering the why, but I think it would be a great idea to, you know, ha form a committee or look into other grants, other ways that could um, assist yeah. the uh, families. No, yeah, thank you. I support that. Right, and I think that was kind of the, the going forward is this this discussion isn't over for the purpose of this meeting tonight, right? We 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 have not accepted the why, you know. So we, th so the purpose of the meeting really now is that you know the budget season went through in such a way that it was it was it's later just the way that it's structured. It's later that we knew that we were not you know there, the, that we had the amount of money that we did. Um, through council's process as well. So it wasn't that this was been a year, this has been just a really difficult year budge budget wise, late in the game, and we're doing our due diligence coming right now. All right, what do we do? How do we communicate this out? I think the conversation isn't over. I think that there's the willingness of community members, elected leaders, parents to come to the table to see what what is possible. And I think if we all kind of keep that as a central value that they want to keep our values is kind of coming up a lot values in school value in, values in after school values in our um in committees i think we'll be able to move forward yeah go ahead board member uh tierney thank you 
I just was curious for the group that did meet, the ad hoc committee, um, actually I guess my first question is did they meet with the um, YMCA as well, like it was a discussion, no, it was just the ad hoc, okay. Um, has there been any, have any concerns risen from, uh, you know, because it, it sounds like this is our option, right? We either accept this, uh, sure. the why, or we have no, we have nothing. This is, right, right, so, exactly. Okay, yeah. so I'm fine to support it yeah. because I, you know, it seems like it's fine. I haven't heard anything yet, but sh are the, is there anything we should be aware of that has come up as a, well, so not sure about this. So I think I'm going to just ask the the superintendent or you just to speak to this a little bit. Yes, the concerns that we've received emails from constituents and family members about about things absolutely and the, and, and the cost who will run the program how, will it be much different in staff or overall what does it look like, you know, the uncertainty of it. Yep, or member Clark. So I when we when they came to um you know approach our board with coming into our school. We had questions during the ad hoc committee. Was there any, um, you, you just said they weren't communicating that way, but did they answer our questions? Um, Cause we had, uh, we had specific questions like okay. mm -hmm, if they were able to do more like funding for our low income families and there's other things. So I don't know if we ever heard back from that. Because that was kind of a point too. We were we were trying to decide if yeah. this is what we were going to do. Is if they 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 have a bigger pool. I think that in in like the documents from what I saw and and, and then um, they were they were going to get back to us. I just wasn't sure what they had circled back and for gotten back for our information able to, for low income. I think it's like what they have. For I people. think it's going to depend on who signs up too, because it's it's going to be dependent on that person's financial situation and what they the, what they qualify for. So I don't think you're going to know those answers until the people actually sign up. You may want to give it next year if you go with the Y see how it plays out, then determine if it's something you want to help lessen the cost because they, the, the parents could be paying less than they're paying now if they qualify. You don't, you don't know until you get it under your belt and see how it works. So it may want to be like, a, don't keep it on your radar and talk about it all year, but maybe wait until you have a year under your belt to kind of see what happens. Uh, uh, was it a clarifying um, answer, Board Member Marsh? Okay, okay, go ahead. I'll have you go first, and then Saldati Wentworth, just because he's Right, um, and, and, I, and I get where um, Katie Krause is coming from. I think it was something we, we discussed at the ad hoc somewhat, and I think the concern was um, of, not, of parents not knowing of whether or not the cost will go down. That, you know, there was a thought of, well, let's see how it goes. Um, and you know, as parents start signing up, we'll have a better idea. Um, but there was some concern that parents, there are parents that may not sign up because of the initial cost. So it may not be, it, it may not represent um, the the true challenge to some of our, the parents. Right. Our communication is kind of key in order to link them up with the why. Um, Saldati and followed by Wentworth. Um, yeah, I I could be remembering this incorrectly, but from the presentation, I thought us uh, they had also mentioned that aside from the like individual case by case need based um, tuition, that they did say something about that they themselves provide applicants with resources to apply themselves for separate support. So let's say they aren't applicable for the wise financial aid program or you know what they don't meet a threshold that the Y still does also provide a bunch of resources which I don't know what those resources are if that's already resources we're tapping or what but um but yeah I think it is in a from a communication standpoint of getting getting the word out because of course we don't want there to be a massive drop off in people in need who think that this is something that really isn't accessible to them so I do think in some ways you know the school board and the SAU are this sort of linchpin to say to the to the parents and then with the why to like help bridge that gap so that it's like no 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 don't you know don't turn away don't don't take your kid out of the program like let's find a way to make this work instead of oh sorry it's uh, it's cost prohibitive it, this isn't for me 
I think it, all squares. it does say under financial assistance that they are licensed and accept state assistance through the state of New Hampshire, but that they also offer their own financial assistance for families that need it. So it's two, you're right, it's two different things. There's the state and then the Granite Y also provides some financial assistance. Yeah, and I don't think it's their first rodeo here. Um, they, they work in other cities where there are families in need. So I think they're pretty familiar with how to go about helping folks. Um, by the way, I just wanted to mention the um, Rochester Child Care Center. I anticipated them having a proposal. It, it didn't come through. That's why you have one proposal. And I don't think I'm concerned about waiting too much longer, to be honest with you, because we really need to have a decision soon because there are a number of things that have to take place over the next couple of months so the program's up and ready to go when kids arrive in the fall. Yeah, so I guess just, oh, I'm sorry. Did I, oh. but in front of me? I have a question to Lou? Yeah, okay. well, like a follow-up, I mean, just a. Well, Barbara, yeah. I'm so sorry. No, I, sorry. Sorry. okay, just, so uh, I guess just to clarify then my question about concerns, um, I wasn't thinking so much like community, like is this too expensive, whatever, for, I was thinking more like has there anything come up about the program itself, a any red flags? That, that's all, just because this is the only one, and as much as I want to say, yeah, we need this, let's do it, um, I just don't want to be blind, you know, I don't want us to be blindsided, but like, well, there was this thing that people were, you know, I don't know. No, I, th I thought the proposal was well-reasoned. Katie and I met with them. They came through on the deadlines that we asked them to meet. They answered all of our questions. So we felt good meeting with them, Katie. I don't want to speak for you, but I th you're nodding. We felt good about the people. You know, we got to know them through a couple different meetings, and then when they came and presented here, I felt comfortable and with their presentation. I really think they're family focused and will do the best that they can to try to get folks, parents lined up with resources that they can access. That's that's my take on them. Yeah, Wentworth, Brown, I Clark, just, then Marsh. I just think that word of mouth and our communication is going to be super key to any kind of success. And that's, you know, getting a, some of the current members, families on board. And um, but I, I did want to touch on that Katie had mentioned before is that they could possibly be paying less. No one's going to know until they start tapping into all those resources. But um, I, for one, support. I mean, this is much more than we've ever been able to offer before. So. I have a comment and, a, and uh, three questions. My comment is I absolutely support the school district looking into out of school care because I liken it to the rec department's summer camp. It's at least an option for people and for the city, in, in this instance, the school district, doing the legwork to find a provider is a huge relief for working parents having mm. used this kind of a service. So my specific questions um, after that comment, um, I know that this was a proposal. Was there an RFP that was put out? How did we get proposals? No, we Only just one. contacted folks that we knew were in the area that did this. Okay. Um, they're actually not going to be paid by us, right? They're not providing a service for the district. It, we're allowing them in-kind costs to use our facilities, but they're really not providing any service directly for us. They're ac actually a vendor for parents using our space. Yeah, and I so didn't similar to the Head Start, I guess that's already currently at Idlehurst. Yeah. They pay us a fee for the facilities use, but it's not our pro you know, it's not our program. They use our building. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, and I didn't mean to by asking about the RFP no. process that I was insinuating that something nefarious had happened. No. I you know, I understand when you've got a void, you canvas and you try to find the best fit. Um, one thing I did notice with the proposal on uh, page 2 under purpose, it says that it's going to cover <coughs> after school vacations. Yeah, the inconsistency. There's that inconsistency. This is pur purpose of the proposal. Our goal is to expand our child care services, dot, dot, dot. This includes no school day, early release, snow, snow day, child care. So then when I go back to page three and look at the very bottom, no school days and inclement weather, it's carving out a bunch of things that they had said on page two. So it's just a clarification that I 
think would be helpful. I know that the subcommittee is working on this, but that was one inconsistency to have. We, we weren't fine line the, the agreement. We were more kind of a community listening, um, active listening space. But that, that is, I think that typically at their, their facilities, YMCA facilities, they offer that. I, and I don't think the schools can, but. The next um, sentence says, we offer full day for an additional fee at the YMCA of Summersworth branch. So the school portion would be closed, but they would offer it to families at their other branch location. Anything okay. else? Yep. That, yep. that was it. And I yep. uh, thank you very much for those explanations. I think they were helpful. All right. Board Member Clark. So this may be a question for um, Chair um, Marsh, right? I lose my head. Or Katie. Um, I keep, why? Oh, Board Member. Sorry, Chair. I don't know. Phew, it, this is these late nights, man. I don't know. Anyways, um, we talked about the last meeting about the, um, the school board um, possibly funding parts of something, like giving something to. Is that something that we're still looking into with? Uh, we're not because okay. the direction was we're not funding SYC. So. Sure. No, but I meant like at families, like on the other side. So we're funding um families so I, I thought our last meeting when they came in for their proposal we had said well maybe we could do something yeah like we would give yeah. money to get a little we, fund yeah like the city or this uh, the, on our side to give money to be able to, i think we don't have that bandwidth i don't believe to be able to put anything in there right at this moment i think that the the y has access to so much more sure money to direct like have access for um um grants and and other uh supportive systems i mean i think and and and, and board member marsh is also supportive like going forward we need to assess how this is going right I, I agree we need to see who's signing up how what the like keep listening to you know if there's any hurdles i think we're going to be in partnership with the y and families and um you know whatever that shapes up with i think I, I i believe i said that but at this very moment in time we don't have the funds to be able to put into a fund base please correct me if i'm wrong um to be able to subsidize it all sure just because of the budget constraints this so year. this is i want this out there for the public to say that potentially i'm thinking about families that are at that cutoff they do not qualify but they need some kind of help so i'm thinking about those families that they just don't make it, they make just enough and they can't get. So I would like us to potentially put this somewhere on record that we will look into possibly putting a fund reach together. Out, reach out to your elected leadership at large, mm -hmm. your ward. If, you, if that is the case, reach out to the SAU. I mean, keep, speak to us. You know, sometimes, you know, we only hear kind of like when there's concerns, but speak to us about that because we need to know to be able to make wise decisions going forward, especially with budget. Was there anyone else that wanted to speak to this? Okay. Yep. Board, oh, yes, Board Member Chair Marsh. Marsh. Chair Marsh. <laughs> Thank you for those words, Vice Chairperson <laughs> Clark. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I just want to say that I think the Y, I believe the, the Y is a good, good program. I recognize that they have a track record. I recognize their experience in doing this. Um, you know, we always have a choice. But the, the choice of doing nothing isn't a good one. Mm -hmm. So I recognize that. So, you know, I will support this this evening. Mm -hmm. um, my, I think my concern is what um, Board Member Clark indicated that, and I think no doubt I'm more sensitive about this because of what I do for my employment, right? I see many people in my human service office that do not qualify for many programs. Mm -hmm. They do not qualify for child care through the state. They do not qualify for SNAP, food stamps, and many other programs. But they're in my office. And it's not because they're spent necessarily, some are, but it's not necessarily because they're spending their money unwisely. It's because they don't have enough money to go out despite working sometimes multiple jobs. The cost of rents have skyrocketed and living in general. 
And so my concern goes out to those families that are on that, I think, cusp that Board Member Clark is talking about. And, and so I hope um, that, um, that we continue to explore. I hope, I, I recognize that there can be a, a school of thought of what we should just, you know, we should, shouldn't do it, right? Because, you know, we have the other priorities. But they indicated that I asked the question, and, and others I think followed up on it a bit, that there are, maybe not many, but there is at least one or so school district that do partially subsidize the program to try to keep the amounts low, knowing every year that amount's probably low-hanging fruit in the school board budget. So I recognize that. So please, let's you know, keep that conversation alive, including funding, whether it's from the school district and or the city itself. If um, there's been talk about additional, potentially additional funding, it, depending on how the Senate vote goes, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's the, the Finance Committee should be voting on that soon, and then the full Senate. Um, and, you know, then there may be, perhaps there's a potential there. But we may, not all, we may not know those parents that are choosing not to because they simply can't afford it. And we may not know those parents that don't sign up for it. And I just want to be a voice for them. Okay, but heard. I generally support the program. Heard. Thank you. Um, board Member Soldati. Um, yeah, I mean, in some ways, this um, you just mentioned this, but I wondered a little bit about, um, and again, this these might be stupid questions because I'm also just new to this position, but um, of, yeah, working with the city to establish some sort of, obviously there's no line item in our budget now, but a whether it's a scholarship or a fund or some means of, in lieu of a budget line item saying that actually there is still need here and it isn't going to go away. Um, and I wonder too, because we, I assume someone has, you know, the, the families that have been using SYC that actually there is, it's, these aren't, um, you know, unknown quantities. These are real people, um, our neighbors and to, I don't know if there is any way to liaise with those people, whether through the Y, um, connecting them or whatever to find out, yeah, who are the individuals who are in need and what is the amount of need and to bring that to the city to say, this was cut, this is the need, how are we going to make up the difference so that it isn't just us on our own or like you're pointing out back on those families, but really showing up for them to say, we realize this has been, uh, you've been impacted by, by this change, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that intention, um, is important and I'm dedicated to seeing it through I think there's others here too so with that right with that kind of um, knowing knowing and people listening and please reach out to us because um, it, it's just really important but with that you know for today's for tonight's meeting purpose we're looking for a motion um, for the district to engage the YMCA to provide before and after care programming for the 25 24 25 school year um, so that would be the motion, and I think that's a smart one to be able to start the process, communicate, link up families, get the get the proper information to people um, ahead of time. I would really, you know, advocate for that. So, I would like to make a motion for the Y to provide before and after care for the Summersworth School District for twenty four twenty five okay, school year. Just for this year, yeah. Oh. District, yeah. the district, or do you can want I yep. amend it to amend it the superintendent? That okay, go ahead. Amend it, amend it to not engage the Y, but to have the superintendent engage in discussions with the Y okay. to provide those services for the 2024 25 school Perfect. year. Except, accepted, yeah. yes, okay, okay great. Thank you. Do I have a second? Great. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye, aye. all right, thank you. I, I just want to say thank you. I, I, this was, you know, real, real concerning to me, having the cuts, and we really tried to look at what is the backup plan. We've tried to do this all along over the past couple of months, and um, I'm just grateful for your support and um, taking.
taking the time to listen to the why and when they came in. I, I appreciate that. And we don't want to leave our families hanging. So, and now my, my next step is going to be getting a letter out to parents um, this week and letting them know. And then I will call the why and say, how do we want to communicate this out? So I really appreciate your support. And we had a, and Katie, I want to thank you too. It was um, a tight timeline and I'm just grateful we're at a point where we're at right now. We have an option, right? So anyway, thank I, you. I just have a quick question. Just when you're thinking about communication and um, do we have, and this I guess is just a general question when the school district communicates with families, knowing that we have a lot of families who maybe the parents, English isn't their first language. Do we communicate in all the different languages so that the parent, the, the people can read? That's and a, like, that's a Great question. I haven't done that in sending out like cancellation notices. Yeah. We do require it for special education. Um, let me look at that's a good point. Because I, that. yeah, I'm just thinking, especially, you know, as we've been talking about the families in need, um, I, you know, and, and the concern that, um, well, they might see that number and immediately say, oh, well, we can't do that. And then they, that's it. They, they stop, right? But maybe if they can read something clearly in the language of their, you know, their native tongue, then, and that's clearly says, please, you know, options or financial, you know, assistance is available. Yeah. So anything we'll let, I'll talk, I'll talk with yep. the SOL staff okay. about Perfect. how to. And the Y may actually provide that too with, with their communications. They may have that. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. All right, moving to the uh, agenda item 9.2, it was already on first read at our last meeting, our um, summer school board schedule for the 24-25 uh, school year. Um, let's get a motion on the table first and then open it for discussion. So is there a motion to approve uh, the schedule as presented? I move to approve the schedule as presented. Yep, great, second. second. All right, all right, any discussion, um, board member clerk? Oh, thanks. Um, I just had a quick question. Why are we meeting twice a month every month? Like, is that a reason? Because in the past, in the oh, past years, it's been one school board meeting per month. When did that policy change? That it was two. Oh my gosh. It's always been the second and four, uh, whatever, the second and This is two, exhausting. Two. There's oh, only been a few months where we've done one and it's usually because of a holiday or something, but it's always been two. All right, I guess I was dreaming. I think, um, I, I think we're not gonna try to be too heavy on other things. That's yeah, a lot. I'm trying to set, set the tone. Listen, I, it's, it's an hour in, I tried to 20 minutes. I, if we do, really do not need to meet, we will not meet. This, this, this today for, for what we, our discussion was worth it. Otherwise it was a really light agenda t this, for this one. I think our next one will be light as well. We'll see, right? Mm -hmm. To show up, um, you know, I, uh, you know, we'll, We'll knock out what we don't need to show up for. We don't need. It can be an email. You could. I mean, this one. Email, I think. It, I think we have to legally meet once a month, legally, unless something important happens and we have to meet twice a month. I don't know if the charter says you have to meet twice a month. And Let's not, look it up. Right? Legally, <laughs> legally, you have to meet at least once a month, I believe. Yeah. And, and you know, you're going to get into April where you could cut a yeah. meeting out due to school vacation. Nope. Same we holds true for for. No, the same whole truth for February. Um, you could, you know, possibly go to one meeting in August, but you really, um, yeah, uh, September is a busy month, October, and then you get into your just, budget season. So, yeah. I, I guess the only thing, though, um, just to keep in mind, um, you know, that that could impact policy. Yeah, right, could. because then you can't get through as many, like your first reading, second reading, you know, you're waiting a whole nother month. Right. Well, um, I'm saying that we could. We could meet twice a month. The, yeah, I'm just, yeah. Just saying, like, okay, we need a policy. We need to get this through. Let's add another month. I'm just know. saying, but yeah. I don't think we have to put it on, like. It's always better to schedule in advance and cancel than it is to try yeah, to get everybody scheduled team. on last minute. All right. Board Member Marsh, then Wentworth. Yeah. Well, thank you for thinking differently. Yeah. <laughs> Board Member Clark, right? Why not, right? Um, right. There's, I think there's an imperfect balance where we don't want to meet for the sake of meeting. At the same time, we want to try to stay on top of things, too. And I think that can be that challenge with the first and second reading. Um, but, you know, I think it's something to keep on the radar. Thank you. Perfect attendance, Board Member Marsh. Yes, Board Member Wentworth. 
to follow up on uh, board member Clark's uh, discussion, we if we if a, a meeting were to be canceled, um, what what is that? Like, what does that look like? Like, so. Chairperson Larson, Chairwoman Larson, um, would you yeah. cancel it? Like, would you have to cancel it two weeks ahead of time? If the superintendent has, I mean, if we have nothing on our agenda and we really do not have to meet, it hasn't happened often. We have had some yeah. short meetings. Um, you know, just keep in mind as a board member to miss three, board, three um, regular board meetings in a row is kind of like a, you know, without communication is, you know, We'll be concerned about you. I'll be at your house to see how you are, uh, but that's kind of a you're out, you know, and, and we don't hear you don't hear from anyone. We'll try to fill the um, city council. We'll go to city council to fill that position. That's like you know the missing, but um, your policy says at least monthly. It doesn't say monthly. Twice. I monthly yes. At least I, I want to make a I want to make an amendment. You want to make an amendment? Well, I do. I I just the only comment I want to make is that I in the two over two years now that I've been serving on this board right has it been that long um, I don't think I've ever we've ever shown up and I've thought to myself yeah we really didn't need to meet tonight like there's always been something and you're right sometimes it's just been a brief meeting because there was a particular purpose yeah, like I think we can get that done in one yeah. month but meeting. I, <laughs> is it gonna be really but it, long? I already long right yeah I, I don't know I mean I'm not saying I, um, th that's just that's okay. just the thought that comes to my mind. It's like I've never. It's not like the yeah. This could have been an email. I'm gonna make a proposal. That's the calendar. I'm gonna make it. We want to hear my my but proposal. We have a first. Okay, so let's go through this. So we have okay. a we have a motion on the table, and if you'd like to make an amendment, right? So like officially like going through this, anyone step in. You make you'll make an, a motion to amend, right? And that needs a second. Okay, okay. I I motion to amend. Second, but, but say what what the, mo what, the oh. what you're amending. So my motion oh. is to amend the some of our school board schedule for a school year 2024, 2025, and this is what I want to amend. I want to take off one of the days, one of the months in August, and then keep two for September, two for October. Take off the one for November. There's only already one for December. And then um, take off a second one for January. Are you listening? Okay. Maybe keep January because budget. Just and remember, then, though, that's not going to allow you to do a first and a second. We're going to have to wait a whole nother month to get things approved. So I just for August, right? August, we're going to keep two for September, two for October, right? One for November. I want um, December can stay. January is two because we have budgets. February is a short month. Why are we doing two in February? You guys can all nix this. It's fine. February, you added the extra so that you had more time for input on your budget from the public. We added okay. that last year because you felt. And there then March time. two, April two, but May should have one, and then June should have one. Can, can you say that one? Cause it was, I, so August one. Yeah, because it was a discussion. I couldn't keep track of it. So August one. Yeah. So September will be two. Yep. October will be two. Mm -hmm. November will be two. No, I thought you said one. You said one. Oh well, I'm changing it down to. It's fine. Twenty-six. Um, is December. To so December is already one. Should we make November? One or two, guys. I can One. cancel All right. meeting whenever you we want. All right, so um, so I just got some. Okay, so November one, uh, January two because of budget. February two, I guess. Um, March two, April two, May one. This can is open I ask for if there's a motion? Can like. J I'm I'm confused. Like, can we do, like, would each date be a motion? You know what I mean? Oh, she's making like, an amendment for what she just said. Read the amendment. Read, amendment. Read. Motion. The amendment motion. It hasn't been seconded yet. Okay. No. Right. Okay. 
Thank you for your motion. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> it's really I will okay. make another commitment to not having meetings for meeting's sakes. Chairs of your committee, please um, be mindful of people's time. A, an hour long should be enough to get things done. But I value your time, and you show up. And I really value this board's incredible time over the years. So yes, uh, Saldati fo followed by Tierney. Is there a second? Yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry I didn't support the motion. Um, but I also want to say just as, again, I'm, I'm new here, that I do something I've become increasingly more aware of about this position is that it isn't just about that I show up and I do the things. And the, obviously, the workload is is significant if we have two meetings a month and then two committee meetings. So it's four meetings a month. I, I totally agree. However, something I've started to recognize, and it's really just from watching you all, is how much a lot of us coming here is to show our community that we are showing up and it's signaling to them that we are here, that we're present. So even if a meeting's 20 minutes or or whatever the meeting agenda might be, that, that the people who've elected us or the people who depend on us to do this work know that we're here. And so I, that's why I didn't support it. It's just because I would think that it would maybe send a message that we don't intend to send um, to, the, to the residents. I, yeah, I, would, I don't have the policy in front of me, but I would suggest perhaps it's worth looking at the policy to just make a statement like, you know, meetings may be canceled at the chairperson's discretion. You know, just something so that 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 is sort of there. My, my big concern was just, um, with all due respect, Board Member Clark, it just seemed like they were, well, I just, I, I wanted some rationale for why certain ones were being cut and like this far ahead of time. Right, and so we just don't know, and and like I'd rather have them be there as placeholders, and then like, oh, you know, we really, it's only going to be 15 minutes, and we could just add this information to the next one because it, you know, so um, that that was just I was just concerned about this sort of just, yeah, blanket, you know, uh, a change, um, but yeah, so may, maybe the policy just to, as a you know, a CYA, right? Just kind of like, we'll, hey. We'll put know. that on in August. Uh, Wentworth and Brown, yep. I know she had her hand up. So one of the, one of the things too that I want to add is that, you know, this is part of the reason why I canceled um, my committee meetings, um, just because for the educational, uh, a lot of what my work will or the committee's work will be focused on is for assistant superintendent who is not here yet. So we wanted to get that person on board. Um, and so I think it is, I think we're all incredibly mindful of not having meetings just for meetings sake. Um, if it was like, I mean, I could, I could jump on board for um, August and November, but nothing else. And mind you, we there there is a retreat in the works for um, this summer, so that August thirteenth could be a part of that. Like we could, we we didn't have one last summer. We're gonna have an amazing one this this summer. We're and I'll send out a link to be like where people's schedules are because it'll be, it'll be wonderful. Um, but it could be on the thirteenth. But any scheduling, you know, other things, um, please let me know. But board member Brown, please. Sorry to ask a, a point of order because we don't have a second it on this motion no. yet we've had I guess public comment because it wasn't discussion because we didn't have a second on the motion mm -hmm. so I didn't know if you were going to offer is there a second and if there's silence I guess we move on or if people want to continue public comment oh uh, no so that's yeah, my th right there's a there's a motion on the table to so about the calendar right so speaking to the calendar and we did speak to that we're kind of getting in the in the weeds a little bit I guess with because we, in order for discussion to happen, you need a second. I don't see a second. So there's a motion on the table to accept the um, Summers for School Board schedule for next year as proposed. Uh, we've already seen this at our previous meeting. It just wasn't on the agenda um, this evening. And we have a second. Um, so I'm going to ask all in favor, um, say aye. Aye. Do, or Wait, we on the motion? Yeah, we need to some clarity, yeah. A motion on the table to accept the calendar as presented. Yep, that's right. the only motion that was seconded. That's the only motion that was seconded. So I'm going to ask for your for your vote. Yep, go ahead. Yep. Yes. The, the Katie, calendar. Do you, do you, Katie has it in the minutes. Oh, yeah. The, 
not 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 the not the taking it away but w with all intention if we do not need to meet we will we, I, we will I, yeah, it there was, was a motion was by seconded. Susan, seconded by Marsha, to approve as presented yep. originally. Yes. Right. Sorry, that's all right. We can we can meet for another. You no, know, no, no. But I think I think we understand the intention, and yeah. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 No. No. Okay. No. Calendar is adopted. It A1. can be changed. Love to look at the policy. If we can just put the policy in our minds for early school near year, just to say, just to make it a little bit more refined. All right. Uh, future meeting dates. Our penultimate meeting, May 28th, 7 p.m. Comments by visitors this evening. I do not believe there are any. Uh, any comments by board members? Thank you for indulging me in speaking um, to this uh, gratitude and appreciation in the beginning. Yes, board member Wentworth. I'd like to make an motion. To oh no, it's board member blank. board member comments. But you can, okay. I don't want to silence anyone, but there's anyone. Yes, board member Marsh, go ahead. No. Since I really couldn't comment during the last discussion, I guess the the, the non-discussion <laughs> regarding the calendar, um, I just want to say I really respect um, board member Clark's uh, just putting an option out there. I've been known to do that sometimes. You know, I talked about something earlier today, right? Uh, and I wasn't on at an island all alone, but, you know, I was a little bit on that peak all alone. And that's okay, right? Because we all have different views and represent different constituents and so forth. So, um, but I respect that. So, thank you. Absolutely. All right. All right. Um, comments by board members, thank you so much. And looking for a motion to go into non-public per 91A32A-C. Motion to go into non-public 91-A semicolon 32A through C. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Maggie Larson. Yes. Todd Marsh. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix. Yes. Marsha Brown. Yes. Barbara Wentworth. Susan Tierney, yeah. Gemma Soldati. Oh. Sarah, where are you? Oh, that's you. Well, okay. <laughs>